Okay. I did whatever I needed to do now. Now I see <laughs> both of you. <laughs> okay. Um, so you, you actually both know me. So, uh, you know, my name's Bonnie Diamond and my practice is staying in balance. And I am uh, on Northampton Street. Um, Lindsay, I'm just diagonal to uh, where the New River Valley Food Co-op is, is going oh, in. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's kind of exciting. Okay. And hopefully, come on. Ah, here we go. Okay. Um, so um, I'm going to, I'm calling this Yummy Healthy Food and How Eating Well for 30 Days Can Change Your Life. And the idea of yummy healthy food started um, in March during the pandemic. Uh, I started a food blog and I started posting recipes on my website um, and sending emails out. And I realized how important food really is to me and um, how powerful it is in, in keeping, getting us healthy and, and keeping us healthy. Um, and um, so I'm going to talk a lot about ways to eat healthier, and I'm sort of going to do a deep, deep dive into um, your kitchen, because really, if you have uh, a kitchen that's stocked with healthy foods, it's much easier to, uh, to cook in a way that supports you nutritionally. Um, and so, and um, my whole idea is eat whole foods, eat a balanced diet. So eat produce, eat um, healthy uh, fats, eat healthy proteins, uh, eat whole grains. And um, only buy packages that have those ingredients in them. And um, so, and the idea of nutrition being in, important uh, goes back to traditional Chinese medicine. And in this diagram, we have the um, we have the five element, five organ system, and um, the spleen, which is Lindsay. I know you know this, um, but for Bernice, the spleen, the digestive system, really is in the center and has um, a large impact on all of the other um, organs. So, and it's really the earth element is the spleen. It's really spleen, pancreas, stomach are all part of that earth element. And so this is just info on my food blog. If you guys wanna see any of the recipes, you can go to bonniediamond.com forward slash yummy healthy food. And I'm gonna start with my, what I call my miracle breakfast. Um, and uh, I'll talk about some of the ingredients in it. And I came up with this because I started thinking about the standard American breakfast. And I started looking at it um, from the, uh, from the idea of how much sugar and fiber we were getting, or you know, people eating this breakfast were getting. Um, and it turns out that a glass of orange juice cereal, cup of coffee has um, twice the recommended daily amount of sugar for women per day. And so if you're eating this breakfast, you're already you can't have any treats during the day. You, you've already um, are eating way, way, way too much sugar, even though all these foods look kind of healthy. Um, and then fiber, and, and so, you know, according to the uh, FDA, um, they're saying 25 grams of sugar a day, 25 grams of fiber a day. I think we really should be getting about half the amount of sugar and about twice the amount of fiber. And so I started to think about, well, how do people get that in their diet? And so this breakfast here, even if you have raisin bran, which is, has the highest amount of fiber, you're getting 18 grams of fiber. And um, 
it turns out Raisin Bran also has the highest amount of sugar. So you're getting uh, 20 grams of sugar. And something like Special K, which really doesn't have that much sugar, has no fiber in it. So you're getting like two grams of fiber um, from your breakfast. And so I, um, I, I started figuring out how I personally could get, could switch those numbers around in my diet. And I came up with um, uh, instant oatmeal with almonds and flaxseed and berries and um, some, uh, a tablespoon of just powdered fiber. And that brought breakfast up to 22 grams of fiber and seven grams of sugar and the seven grams of sugar are for, for, woo, for from things like berries, which have, um, have fiber in them and also have antioxidants in them and you know, are, are healthy for the body. So, that, uh, so that's how I got my miracle breakfast. And I have this pretty much wherever, every morning, wherever I am in the world, um, if I'm traveling before COVID, I would just take my package of instant oatmeal and I would take a little baggie with the almonds and flaxseed and fiber in it and just add some boiling water and um, would have my breakfast. So this is kind of my go-to breakfast. And then for lunch and dinner, um, I, for myself and also when I'm working with patients, it's really a lot of vegetables, um, probably twice as many vegetables as most people are eating. Um, and I have some pictures of, of um, recipes that I have on my website. Um, and uh, this is carrot ginger soup. And I'll just go through these. We can, if people are interested in the recipes, we can come back later and I can take you over to my website and we can look at some of these recipes. Um, carrot ginger soup. I do a fried rice with um, turkey hot dog and uh, some scrambled eggs and brown rice and um, broccoli and carrots and whatever veggies I have in the fridge. Um, this is a Moroccan cat carrot salad uh, that has some garlic in it, a uh, little parsley in it, uh, olive oil and lemon juice. Really easy to make and, and really light. And um, it's just, it's a nice, it's a nice dish. And this is roasted cauliflower uh, with olive oil, some lemon juice. I added olives, um, some garlic and really just in the oven for probably about 45 minutes at about 350 degrees. And this is um, Israeli couscous with roasted veggies, tofu and caramelized tomato sauce. And the secret to this is um, when you're cooking the tomato sauce, you caramelize it in a cast iron skillet until it kind of um, gets a little brown and the flavor really uh, intensifies. And then you um, roast the veggies, the tofu uh, separately, add it into the pot, make some Israeli couscous, mix it all together. And this makes a nice lunch or dinner. And this, um, I make this or some version of this a lot. Uh, uh, it's Mexican chicken and rice with chopped salad. So um, I heat up some uh, uh, chopped chicken or turkey or beef you could use uh, in a cast iron skillet. I add some, um, I add some salsa to it. I add some, uh, soy cheese, and then I um, chop parsley, avocado, tomatoes, scallions, and olives. Um, and I put the chopped salad on top of the uh, chicken and rice, and I eat it with some, uh, with some tortilla chips. 
Um, this is sesame chicken meatballs with brown rice and broccoli. Uh, yeah, da, 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 da. And I'm trying to think the sesame chicken meatballs, I mix um, uh, uh, chopped chicken uh, with scallions and ginger and garlic and um, make them into meatballs. I think I saute these um, and serve it on a little lettuce and that's actually lettuce from my garden from the summer. So. Um, and sausage and kale soup with farro. So I saute some uh, onions, um, some chicken sausage uh, diced and uh, onions, chicken sausage, uh, garlic. Um, and I add uh, a can of like a 28 ounce can of tomatoes, some uh, chicken broth. Um, and then I add uh, kale and farro, and I just let that cook, and it makes really a nice, warm, hearty meal. And do you have questions? The last one, how do you get the kale not to overcook? I always have that problem when I put it in soups. <laughs> oh, it overcooks? It turns that dark. You know what I mean? It, it's no longer that nice green. Oh, I think you could just add it at the very end. At the very end. And I, I cook it for maybe five minutes and I maybe shouldn't, I should probably just leave it simmer after I turn it off, right? Yeah, at the yeah. End. You could, yeah. You, yeah, I think that's, um, yeah, I would just put it in at the end and um, don't boil it, you know, just yeah. either turn the heat off or keep it on a, mm -hmm. um, simmer yeah you can also watch the kale and if it gets to like a bright green color that usually mm -hmm. means that it's ready if you yeah. wait too long then it starts to get a little bit more of that like what you're talking about darker yeah. or yeah like kind of dull looking mm -hmm. yeah that helps okay okay and um so this is my three steps to yummy, healthy eating. The first is clean your kitchen. The second is create a pantry list. And the third is plan your meals and make a grocery list. Um, so the clean your kitchen is get rid of, um, and you guys may have already done this or done some parts of this, but get rid of um, highly processed grains. Um, anything, white bread, white flour, white pasta, um, get rid of foods with sugar or high fructose corn syrup. And so for sugar, I, I check and if there's more than five grams of sugar, I don't usually use whatever the product is. Mm -hmm. um, trans fats are pretty much out of foods right now, although sometimes there's a little bit and you have to read the label and um, check for partially hydrogenated oils and um, get rid of foods with high sodium, get rid of foods with chemicals, food coloring, um, and also I'll say limit processed meats. Um, sometimes I use a little of those just for flavoring, but, but in very small amounts. And so when I'm working with people, I really encourage them to clean their kitchens out. And um, if they can't do it right away, I tell them not to replace things that have these foods in them. Um, if they're ready to sort of go cold turkey, I have them either throw out or give foods to a food pantry. So that what's left in the kitchen is really um, healthy, healthy foods. So, oh, and if there's a person in the house that does not want to um, do this whole uh, uh, nutritional way of eating, I recommend that people just give them a cabinet um, and let them put their cookies or donuts or whatever it is there. And it just makes it easier. Um, and then step two is um, create a pantry list. And I'm going to go through what's in my pantry. 
and I always replenish foods that are in my pantry. And um, I like to cook, so I have a lot of a lot of different foods on my pantry list. So I'll just go through them. So healthy oils like extra virgin olive oil, toasted sesame oil, um, avocado oil is good. Um, these should be uh, cold pressed oils, um, different kinds of vinegars, rice wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar, um, apple cider vinegar. Um, lots of herbs and spices. This is my um, spice drawer that uh, mm. is in my kitchen, close, not too close to the oven, but, but on the side of the oven so I can get to it easily. And, um, uh, you know, so I have a lot of different spices because I like to cook um, lots of different uh, ethnic foods. And um, so, you know, I have things like basil, oregano, but also cumin, chili powder, turmeric, uh, cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg. Uh, I have caraway seeds usually, I have fennel seeds usually. So, um, uh, and, and I replenish these when, you know, something runs out, I, I get new ones. Um, and this is the fridge. Um, so condiments, um, ketchup, mustard, mayo, low sodium soy sauce, uh, tomato paste. Um, and uh, I try to do organic here and free of high fructose corn syrup. Some of these things do have, um, are, are, are not quite as healthy as they could be. Um, and uh, chicken broth and veggie broth, I always have um, in my pantry. And those are just great flavor adders. Um, if you're uh, sauteing greens or something, it's nice sometimes to just add a little splash of um, chicken or, bread or veggie broth. And um, nuts, almonds, walnuts, pine nuts, cashews. I keep these in the freezer because nuts can go rancid and they last longer in the freezer. Um, and nut butters, um, peanut butter, cashew butter, almond butter. And excuse me, I keep these in the refrigerator. And then whole grains. Um, and I've been really trying lately to eat whole grains um, rather than breads or, uh, or processed grains. Um, so, uh, you know, I have farro, I have buckwheat, I have quinoa, I have brown rice, I have corn milk, and I, I cook with these a lot. Um, and for these, it's generally a cup of whatever the grain is to two cups of liquid. And it's just boil the liquid and um, add the grain, uh, bring it to a simmer. Uh, oh, with the exception of kasha, the other ones, they'll bring it to a simmer for about 25 or 30 minutes. Um, kasha, which I like, uh, uh, it gets toasted. Um, I beat an egg and um, add it to the kasha and uh, saute it in a, uh, in a skillet and then add the liquid to it. And, um, healthy beverages like herbal tea, de decaf coffee, uh, Roma I use, I, I can't do caffeine. So I do caffeine substitutes, um, seltzer. Um, for people who can tolerate some sugar, honey, milk, maple syrup, um, a little fruit juice and healthy snacks like kind bars, whole wheat pretzels, healthy crackers, nuts, dried fruit and dried chocolate. And I like the kind bars because they're five grams of sugar in them and they have nuts and um, some dark chocolate. Um, and they're, they're tasty and healthy. Now, how about monk fruit as a sweetener? Do you use that? Say it again. I, I, monk fruit, like if I'm know. baking, 
and for sugar, I will use monk fruit instead of regular sugar. Oh, I don't. Lindsay, have you heard of that? No. Yeah, I don't. Um, is it a fruit? Bernice, what is it? It's from monk, M O N K, monk fruit, and it's it's white. It looks like sugar when you, it looks you like know, sugar. It, it comes in a bag. It's where the sugar is. I get it like at Whole Foods. Hmm. And it's supposedly one of the best sugar substitutes. I mean, ah. not really, it's it is it has sugar in it, but one of the healthiest, I should say, sugars. If you're going to use it, check it out. Okay. M O N K monk fruit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will do that. Um, and then this stuff is in my fridge, but I always have lemons, limes, garlic, ginger, scallions. Onions, hmm. shallots, greens, tomatoes, carrots, broccoli. Th these things are just always in the refrigerator. So it's easy to, um, it's easy to put together a meal. And healthy proteins, uh, soy cheese, tofu, tempeh, eggs, organic chicken, fish, um, uh, I do some organic uh, meat on occasion, maybe twice a month or something. And I try to get that local. And questions. Meal plans. Okay. Do you meal plan, Bonnie? Do you plan out your week oh. as far as what you're going to make yeah. for meals, or do you kind of go on the fly? <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> I so okay. I'll tell you what I do. I tell you what I recommend. Um, I usually so my husband does the grocery shopping. And he goes grocery shopping on Tuesday. So I usually, um, I, I plan out three dinners um, during the week and we usually have each meal twice. Um, so, uh, and, and this is my, my next PowerPoint thing. Um, people though who are, are so that's, that's kind of how I do that. And then lunch, I open up the fridge and depending on if I'm at home or if I have to go somewhere, I, I you know, I put something together. Um, lately, I've been like, I, I've been doing a lot of veggies at lunch. Um, so but when I work with people, I, I tell them they should plan out their week. And um, I think the, the, the way to do that is to plan it out before you go grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you, you think about your three dinner meals, you think about what ingredients you need. Um, and so you have those set. And then lunch for me, I'm just, I, you know, a lot of times I just open the fridge and see what's there and then, and then prepare something. I've been buying more veggies. So, you know, like the other day I was like, oh, I have some broccoli. I'll steam some broccoli. Um, uh, you know, I can make some brown rice and add a little sesame oil and, and that becomes, and that becomes my lunch. So I think it's, it's helpful to plan at least sort of the anchors for your week. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I'll also say because of what I have in my pantry and because we, we really just go grocery shopping once a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably right now I could, you know, I could cook two weeks worth of food just based on what's in the fridge. Mm, so, okay. um, uh, I, I, I kind of do both, both things. Um, I, uh, I think as you start to do this sort of program where you're having the foods in your house, it becomes easier to just open up the fridge, open up the pantry and say, oh, you know, this is what I feel like having tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, you can do a, a little bit of each. And, um, 
you know, it's me and my husband. So I think it also depends if you have a family, then the planning probably becomes more important um, just to make sure you're, everybody has what they like and, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of healthy. And um, so, um, but I think the, the, the more time you put into just buying foods, buying healthy foods, the easier the cu- cooking and preparing becomes. So it can become kind of second nature. Um, so I say buy four to five vegetables each week. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think, we probably buy a little more than that. You know, it depends on who I'm, if, who I'm working with. There are people that I'm working with who are not eating particularly healthy at all. And there are people who I'm working with who are eating pretty healthy and just need some tweaks. So, um, but you want to think about at least for lunch and breakfast, at least half of what's on your dish should be a vegetable Mm -hmm. or, you know, a mix of vegetables or should be a one pot meal, which I do a lot of that has a lot of vegetables in it. And um, lately also I've been looking into protein and we really, we eat much more protein than we need. So we need something like, um, we need some, people need somewhere between like 40 to 60 grams of protein a day, depending Mm -hmm. on their size. And and proteins in everything, proteins in oatmeal, proteins in flaxseed, you know, proteins in non-animal products. Um, and I, oh, I should tell you guys, I started tracking the protein and we don't, we don't need, protein doesn't need to be our, the center of our meal. So three ounces of protein at dinner is, is plenty to get enough protein in your diet. Um, the other thing, um, I'm going to grab my phone because I just started using this app that you guys might like. So I'll be back in one second. Okay, one second, I'm looking for the phone. Sounds typical. Okay, so I have this app on my phone that I started using called... Oh, okay. It's called pomegranate. And um, I just, I got it from, you know, um, on the iPhone. It says nutrients, but it says pomegranate app. And um, you can put in any food and it gives you the, um, uh, the nutritional value, vitamins, minerals, amount of protein. Um, and it has a whole database uh, or you can add your own so that you could start to track if, if, if that interests you and if you're really looking to be specific around certain nutrients, um, it, it's a nice way to, uh, to track things. And every day you can just add what you're um, eating and it adds and it, it tallies all the nutrients in your meals. So that's, um, that's, you know, when you want to get really specific, this is a kind of thing that's really helpful. And then you have, a, it, it keeps track every day of what you're eating. So you have a record of what you've been eating and, um, uh, you know, it was kind of interesting and you can set like how much protein you want to be eating, how much, how much of all these things in your uh, profile. And you can see if you're hitting your target. Um, um, so, uh, so I don't know, can you guys, oh, you probably can't see this on my phone, but, um, but it, but it has all the vitamins, it has all the minerals, it has protein, 
um, sugar, fiber, fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, sodium. Um, so it, it gives you a lot of information. And I find it useful. I don't do it every day, but I just do it for like a day a week or something just to kind of get a sense of where I am with, with different things. So um, every week you should replenish your pantry list. You should put on your grocery list anything that um, you've used up in your pantry. Um, focus on local seasonal foods. And um, when I work with people, I tell them try one new healthy recipe a week and over like 10 weeks, then they have 10 healthy recipes that they're kind of comfortable with. Um, so uh, that's sort of, uh, I, I think that's a kind of nice way to, to switch over, to get healthier, um, to incorporate one thing each week and, and make sure that you like it and that, you know, um, it, it, it's easy to prepare and, and all of that kind of thing. So, and, um, so shop only after you have <laughs> <laughs> And buy only what is on your grocery list, unless it's yeah, a vegetable. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> or chocolate. <laughs> or chocolate, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, this is really important. So I really think that by focusing on all this preparation stuff, when you actually start to prepare food, it becomes much easier. Mm -hmm. Um. So oh, here are some of my favorite cookbooks, uh, Newman's Own, uh, How to Cook Everything, has like every recipe you could ever want. Um, so it's great to just look up if you have some food and you, you're looking, um, uh, you know, you have like, I don't know, kale or broccoli or, or fish and you, you want a good recipe, um, it's, it's, it's like 500 pages and you can look something up. Um, moose wood I really like for, they have, uh, it's mostly vegetarian. They, they use some fish, but um, uh, they have curry and, and um, uh, stir fry and um, hmm, what else do I make? Just a lot of nice tofu and tempeh recipes. So I use that uh, a fair amount. Um, uh, Simply Ming, um, that's all one pot meals. Uh, so that's a nice cookbook. And 20 minute menus, which um, she gives a pantry list and um, uh, uh, step by step for an entire meal, step by step instructions for an entire meal. So I like that. Oh, and this is um, a patient that I worked with, um, Linda. And uh, so we worked together for about a year and she lost 38 pounds. And um, most of it was just, she stopped eating junk. Um, mm -hmm. And she, she did the one meal, one new meal a week. Um, she started cooking real food. And she didn't, you know, she didn't go like super crazy, super, um, but she was able to just shift her diet enough so that she was eating uh, much healthier. And um, so anyway, um, so I, you know, I think for people who are trying to lose weight, you know, just, you know, just shifting a couple of things can really make a difference. Um, I tell people like, you know, if you put on 10 pounds a year, it might not seem that much, but over five years, then it becomes a lot of weight. If you take off 10 pounds a year, it may not seem like a, month, a lot, but you know, in five years, it could be 50 pounds. So. Um, I, I like to get people to kind of think like that and to stop thinking about dieting and just to make some shifts in, in, in what they're eating on a day-to-day -day basis. And, uh, uh, so I have a roadmap to health wellness program, which is um, 
Uh, it's two, two half an hour. Um, now it's online uh, appointments with me where we kind of go over um, um, either what 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 people are eating or if they're exercising or um, sort of their spiritual practices and find ways of making uh, small changes that lead to really healthier lives. And there's information on my website about this. And so I also do, you guys know, I do Japanese acupuncture, I do cranial sacral therapy. Um, I've been uh, incorporating a lot of uh, manual therapies, hands-on therapies into the work that I do. And I'm finding that that's really helpful for um, pain reduction and relaxation. Um, so are there any recipes that you're interested in seeing or? The well, carrot and ginger soup. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I've looked at your website and I've done um, two or three. Um, ah, but okay. there's all, all kinds of yummy things on there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and any other questions? Any other? So, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Bernice. I was going to say, what do you do with tempeh? I like tempeh oh. and I usually end up marinating it and putting it in the pan and, you know, flipping it over for a few minutes and I say, so, I gotta get yeah. more creative with <laughs> So tempeh um, in the moosewood, I I'm gonna post it on my website. It's not there, but I just made this dish. So I will, I will add it. Um, I do barbecue tempeh. Oh, okay. So uh, saute it with, onions, garlic, some spices, mm -hmm. um, and then add a uh, tomato paste. I'll put it up on the website. Um, okay. um, you make like a tomato sauce and then you, you cook it in the oven for about an hour. And um, it, 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 it's, it's not that difficult to make and mm -hmm. um, it tastes really good. Um, sometimes That's a I requirement. It can't be difficult. And it can't yeah, no, be like isn't... three different processes and three different pots. You know, like I, I can't cook it on the stove and have to put it in the oven and then put it into a blender. And, you know, it's like oh, and then the okay. kitchen is, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so do you have a cast iron skillet? Yeah. Okay. So if you have a cast iron skillet, then it, you can you just cook it in that. That goes into the oven, okay. but oven. it all yeah. stays in the same, yeah, it stays mm -hmm. in the same pot. Um, the other thing I do are tempeh rubens. So oh. I, I, I sort of cut, I, I, um, I cut into two pieces and then I also uh, make it thinner slices, so I divide yeah. it, and um, I saute that, mm -hmm. and um, so, and, and then sometimes I make a Reuben with rice cakes, like to be really healthy, and we have um, a George Foreman grill, and so I saute the tempeh, and then it's um, rice cake, um, some Russian dressing, some uh, coleslaw, and it goes into the grill and the coleslaw does this amazing thing into the rice cake. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 it uh, so that's really nice. Uh, I'm trying to think, okay. There's a sweet and sour if you're doing, if, if you can do sugar, you can do a um, sweet and sour tempeh um with some veggies saute some tempeh veggies and then uh do a sweet and sour tomato sauce add some pineapples if you're doing sugar sometimes i do that uh and any uh this i haven't made but you can do like you can saute tempeh add some veggies add some um red wine and make like a, a um like you would make a beef stew, but it's tempeh. Mm -hmm. So those are my 
those are my tempe recommendation all righty um anything else i thought we were going to look was it a soup or yeah oh, oh the carrot ginger yeah. soup i think oh okay yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah. here we go here we go here we go okay so here we go um so yeah, so I have a, so carrot ginger soup. So I have kind of an index here. Okay. Um, so coconut oil, onion, that, carrot. It, are we supposed to be seeing this? Cause it hasn't, the screen hasn't changed. Do you see a recipe on the screen? No, no. Oh, you don't. Um, okay, hold on. Hold on, I'm gonna, I have to switch. Hold on. I just see your website. So do you want to see the recipe? There. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, that, you see it. it now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's the recipe. Um, so saute co coconut oil, onion, carrots, ginger, and this is a puree, so um, I use a, um, you can get a blender stick. Mm -hmm. That's easier than um, actually putting it into a blender. Uh, so um, it has turmeric, cumin, coriander, cinnamon, little cayenne, saute everything, um, add the either chicken or veggie broth. Um, bring to a boil, simmer for 20 minutes, puree, and then add coconut milk and lime juice. Mm, yum. It's kind of a nice one. Um, I like the fact that at the top, it told you about how long the prep time was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is nice if you're looking through recipes and you're, you need something quick so you can glance yeah. at the beginning and say, Oh, that's not for tonight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I try to do that when I list these. Um, uh -huh. um, like the kale, we saw the kale earlier. Oh, I don't think this takes, this takes 45 minutes, but it's not a lot of, um, most of the time it's just uh, simmering. Mm -hmm. uh, so and I'm just, Oh, and I actually leave the kale in. So I don't know what the, like- Cause that still that, looks nice and green. It's you know still what looks, I mean when it gets dark, yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, when I saute kale, it starts to get a little brown, mm -hmm. but when I just throw it in with the liquid at the ends, it, yeah. it seems to stay, it seems to stay green. Yeah. Um, uh let's see what else we got here oh that um uh i wanted to maybe this is the one. Oh no 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 i wanted to show you the uh, israeli couscous this is the one so um so uh, this takes a while to prepare but it's really good. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, this takes a while to prepare. So you roast the veggies, cook the couscous, and this is where um, you saute the tomato paste and you just mm -hmm. keep um, stirring it until it gets a little, uh, well, you, you add herbs and garlic first but then you just keep stirring the tomato paste until it kind of caramelizes and it gets a really nice flavor. Um, and then you mix that with the couscous and the veggies. Um, let's see. And my, I had the sesame ginger, chicken meatballs. Okay. And this is just 30 minutes. Um, 
and do, 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 do. oh, I bake this in the oven. Okay, so it's I just mix together scallions, ginger, garlic, um, and the uh, uh, chopped chicken or chopped turkey, um, an egg, uh, salt, sesame oil, and soy sauce. I make meatballs out of that, and I um, I put them in the oven. So for about 15 minutes. So this is a nice, and then I, you know, I just cook the rice and the um, broccoli and this is a nice, pretty quick dinner. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and ginger lemon tea. This is, this is a nice kind of thing. I, um, I buy fresh ginger, I wash it and I slice it and I put it in the freezer and um, when I want to make tea, I boil water. I take out a couple of slices of ginger, put the boiling water over it, add some lemon juice, and it kind of gets to the right temperature. It's just a really nice um, drink. Mm. And um, lately also I've been making ginger ale with the sliced ginger and, um, oh, who's that? <laughs> oh, this is my dog. Mm. <laughs> This is Ollie. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, so why don't we just finish up and um, why don't we just go around and say uh, a favorite food. Mm. You want to start Bernice or a food you're thinking of right now? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Or could think, you ate today? Um, I'm thinking shrimp might be one of my favorite go-tos. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's pretty easy to cook. Mm. Do you, how do you cook it? Do you saute it? Do you? Oh, well, I cheat. I usually go to Whole Foods and get the frozen cooked shrimp when they have them on sale. Mm-hmm. And they're absolutely delicious. And I just mm. whip them out of the freezer, defrost them, and then just mm. add them at the end to whatever dish I happen to be doing. Usually mm -hmm. some type of stir fry or something. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Nice. Nice. Lindsay, do you have a favorite? I can think of a favorite food of yours. That's <laughs> not healthy. Uh -oh. I know. Uh -oh. <laughs> I know I love cheese. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, but I lo also love garlic. It's a, it's such a great mm. way of seasoning your food without putting so much salt in it. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I put so much garlic in my food. <laughs> um, but it's really I good. love garlic. Yeah. 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 I noticed that uh, River Valley and Whole Foods have come up with some alternate cheeses with, I forget what their new brand is the past month or two, and they're quite tasty. Are they, they a, they're not dairy? Is it that they're non -dairy. not dairy? They're non dairy. Non -dairy. They just came out with a feta cheese, which I've never mm -hmm. found a non dairy feta. feta? And hmm. it's uh -huh. wonderful. Huh. It's absolutely delicious. And there's a cheddar cheese that tastes really like cheddar cheese compared oh. to things in the past that were like rubber. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Interesting. They're really quite good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, once you get curious with foods, there are just mm. so many foods that you can prepare. And, right. Um, I try to avoid the cheese because they say it's really bad for inflammation. Yeah. And and, as, yeah. I, as I age, I figure it's it's something that I should be careful of how much I eat. So I try to do mostly non-cheese, you know, cheese alternatives most mm. of the time. But once in a while, you just need that cheese. Yeah, <laughs> it tastes so good. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, Lindsay, favorite food? Uh -huh. Oh, you told me garlic, garlic. Garlic, yeah. Uh, garlic. <laughs> it's so and, good. Mine is, 
you know, I like lately, I've just been sauteing onions a lot and starting, um, mm. starting recipes with that. Mm. Um, so. Well, thank you guys. Um, thank you. If you have questions or anything, just feel free to shoot me an email and uh, um, uh, you can check out some of the recipes here and try them out. And, um, Absolutely. Yeah. Inspiring to continue looking for the really healthy recipes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. means I got to do more cooking myself. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Bonnie. Thank, thank you, Bonnie. You. Yeah, thanks. Okay, oh. take care. You bye -bye. too. Okay, bye-bye. Okay.